This is the OTP pregame presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. When it's crunch time for your health coverage, trust Farm Bureau Health Plans to implement the perfect game plan. With over 77 years of protecting Tennesseans, they know how to win. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, our special guest in the Snickers hot seat today from Titans Radio, Coach Dave McGinnis. Woo. Welcome. Oh, you want a Snickers? They really satisfy. They really do. Snickers hot seat. Snickers hot seat. <laughs> Take it all of this home because Halloween's coming up. See, I need candy to give out. See, You're going to be that guy. Yep. That's the key. If you give out oh. full candy bars, uh, yeah. you are the greatest house on the block. Well, And that's why Coach Mack's taking this home. Not just this. The this. jar. The whole jar. Yeah, I don't know. You may get stopped at the front for that. Uh, just take it. Just run. Let's, uh, let's <laughs> promote your show, Mac Talk, on 104.5 The Zone every Tuesday night at 6 Central on our flagship station, 104.5 The Zone, as I mentioned. You and Rhett Bryan do that show. That is an incredibly – you have your own show, and it's an incredibly popular show. Congratulations. Well, thank you. No, it, 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 when they came to us with the – you know, I came to you about it and said they, they wanted – uh, Rhett and I to do it. The thing that they said, though, Mike, was, look, we'll screen these calls. I said, I don't want one call screened. No kidding. I want everybody to come through. Huh. Because, I mean, first of all, with Rhett and I doing it, we'll talk to the people. And whether they're happy, which they are when you win, or they're mad when you don't win, let them talk. Oh, I, I love doing it. It's a lot of fun. It goes so fast. It's a really good show. Well, thank you. It, it, it's, yeah. Tuesday, Tuesday at uh, 6 o'clock. Tuesday at 6 Central. It's only on 104.5 The Zone. They have a good app, so you can stream it on the app if you're not in the region. You would really enjoy that. And you could you could call in. I'm sure they have uh, you won't be a, screened. To, a toll-free number. I, I don't know. Do they charge long distance anymore? I don't think uh, you, so, Mike. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Rhett, Rhett and I each get a dime a call. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, it's a toll. Like a 1-800 number? Well, I used to have an 800 <laughs> number on my talk show. When Did I, you? When I got the 800 number, my show really took off. That's when you knew you had arrived? I did. Yeah. That's awesome. We're not but there. my show blew up. We're not there yet. It really did. No 800 number for not you? Yet. No. Not yet. Sorry, I guess man. that's not a thing anymore. Well, I think it might be. We, we've passed that time. Well, yeah, I mean, you don't have to pay for long distance anymore. That's right. Or so I'm You told. know, but that's the key, too. In A lot of people talk about how much their phone costs them now. Mm -hmm. And I remind them, I said, remember, we used to have to pay long distance. You had to pay per text message. Well, yeah, but, I mean, we used to have to pay oh. my long distance bills in the 1990s because I was living in Knoxville. My family was all here. And so my long distance bills were a couple hundred dollars a month. My but wife you had calling to wait, home yeah. wait until after six o'clock. After six o'clock. Yep, that's exactly right. I remember all of these things. I am that. I'm old enough for that trip down memory lane. Yeah. Okay. OTP <laughs> pregame is about five questions for our special guest in the Snickers hot seat. It is Coach Dave McGinnis. Here is topic question, whatever you want to call it. Number one: Some teams like the Titans run a three-four base defense, meaning they have three defensive linemen. Other teams, like the Indianapolis Colts, run a 4-3 defense. And so you would take that to mean they have a base front of four defensive linemen. Here's the question. The reality seems to be in today's world of defense, it really doesn't matter anymore. So are there any real appreciable differences between a 4-3 defense and a 3-4 defense in 2024? Technically, yes. Realistically, no. Okay. Because everybody, most everybody on third down, third and seven plus, is a four-man front. Is a four-man front, then you take your linebackers and your extra defensive back, you'll mug up to make a five-man front if you want. The true 3 4 defenses that people used to run, where you got somebody on the nose and you've got two tackles that are playing head up, they were playing two gaps. There's very few two, there's not any two gap defenses anymore. And by two gap, I mean this with a 3 4 defense, you played your nose and he played either the left or the right of the center, playing head up. The, the two defensive tackles, okay, were on, the, were on the inside shoulder of the tackles or the outside shoulders of the guards, but they were also, they would play two gaps. And your linebackers, this is how you used to teach linebackers. Your linebackers behind the line, Mike and Amy, now if I'm teaching you, and this is exactly the way that, that I would teach it, 
I would tell you, if you're going to the right, I want you to hit with your, keep, hit with your right arm, but keep your left, your backside arm free. You understand what I'm saying? Your right flipper. Your right flipper. That's what they used to call and it. And then keep your left arm free. So you're basically so you two can gapping. keep outside leverage. Yeah. So you're, 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 you're that, that, and that's it right there. <laughs> Don't hit Mike. But now everybody, whether you're three, four, four, three, everybody's mostly single gap. Right. They're, they're single. There's they're single gap stuff, and so there's very few. That I don't know of anybody that really two gaps anymore, uh, other than when you've got a defensive tackle like the Titans have now in Big Sweat. Big Sweat is big enough and strong enough to be able to play the front side, and then and then come across a face and shed a man and go the other way. Most people now are single gap defenses. He would have been all world in, oh, an, old, the, in an old three four. Oh, right? he he would have been the nose tackle that everybody would have dreamed about. Right, because he could he, he would eat up the center, and then one of the guards would have to help on him, and then you'd have a free rusher from somewhere. I knew he played well against Miami when we were doing the game, but going back and watching it, I could not get over how well he played, and he was playing different places than he had played in the first three games with Jeffrey Simmons out. Well, and the reason was because Jeffrey Simmons is normally a three technique. Jeffrey Simmons normally goes to the tight end side and is on the outside shoulder of the guard to the tight end side, and Big T Sweat – is a shade technique, which is away from the three technique, but between the center and the guard. Well, with Jeff out, then Big Sweat played the three technique. He moved over to the three technique, and he would he would play that. And I agree with you. I had an idea that he was playing pretty well because he was showing up on the perimeter mm-hmm. of the defense and showing up to make tackles for yards lost. I mean, he was he was running down. A chance to, tried to tried to circle him one time and he walked him down with you know with an angle to the outside. This is a special player. My favorite part of Sweat is that he hustles. And, and Jim Washburn would have liked his hustle. Oh, he'd have loved him. I, I, I like that he a defensive lineman, it's like James Lynch, ninety seven, who's in there playing right now and played a good game at Miami. That guy hustles. And Coburn hustles. I mean, defensive linemen who hustle, that's a big deal because their impact, even five yards down the field, can be massive with the way they can hit guys. You were here with Jim Washburn. Absolutely. And all you ever heard him talk about was was get to the ball. Run to the ball. Get to the ball. Get to the ball. And, and that's Tracy Rocker. That's Tracy Rocker. And when he first started with, you know, with, with, with T. Sweat, uh, I can go back – we can go back to – the summer, summertime, worked on his stance because he was he was he was playing too high, and then so yes, needs to keep it up. Big Jeff needs to get back in the mix too. Question about T Sweat because we have in the first four weeks, five weeks of the season, talked a lot about how well he's been playing and how well he's been showing up. Is a little bit of how he's playing, at his hustle, his aggressiveness, his ability to just disrupt everything is part of that due to his youth and the fact that he's able to play kind of out of his mind because you see young players sometimes play with because he's not so beat up he's not so beat up and he hasn't had that experience yet so there's almost you don't know what you don't know so you just kind of play however you would play um, is there a little bit of that, and do you have to worry about that as he continues to play and as he continues to have the wear and tear of the season kind of adjusting for that as a coach? Because he's going to find out that you can't just play full out every minute of every play, even though you want to. You have to protect your body, and you have to. there's also that aspect of it. Well, you learn. Mm-hmm. You, you learn as a pro, but that also that's why it's important to rotate those guys inside that used to, and all the, the great defenses I've been involved with we rotate those big dudes because to your point, it takes a lot out of you. It really does. But the, the thing that, that you, if you watch Tavondre and then we'll get off of Tavondre, but you watch him, that's what he did at Texas. He yeah. was the same thing at Texas. Now he's in better physical condition now because he bought into what ran and, 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 
Anthony Robinson and those when they went down to Huntsville to talk to him this was part of the program you're going to have to get into NFL condition to be able to do what you're talking about against better competition week in and week out and he bought into that and he's doing it the other thing that Tracy Rocker did and he started off immediately with him was he got him lower in his stance because when he came in here he was he was playing too high in his stance. And and sooner or later, you can get neutralized by doing that. He's learned how to play lower in his stance. And so everything now is magnified with his power. And, and, that, and the, I'm sorry, that's such a big deal to your point about some of the technical things because some of the people who are joining us for the OTP might be saying, well, why would they not teach him that in, in high school and college? And certainly they taught him. But remember, you're getting kids in high school after school. Mm -hmm. You know, you get them at 4 o'clock and you got them for two hours. And then in college, you only have 17 hours a week with them in terms of preparation. And so, you're it's just like with receivers, you're trying to get guys ready to play games to win games in high school and games in college. Now, this is your job. How you, how you eat – how you go to meetings, watching Keandre Coburn do his job, watching Jeff Simmons do his job, being called to the GM's office or the assistant GM's office to go over performance. These are things that some guys get better as pros because the detail of the job enables them to refine the technique. Well, that's also true. And the other thing is when you've got big human beings like he is, like a lot of people coming in this league, they've been – a big human being their whole life. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they're able to get away with just swatting flies however they want to do it. Now you're competing against other big human beings. So the technical aspect of it and the total buy-in that you're talking about has to come into it. And when that does, then you got something special. And you said it well. You have to credit the organization for what their plan was with this player. Had a very had a very specific plan. And they made sure that that plan was laid out and agreed on face to face just like we are here before they ever pull the trigger on drafting. Internally and then to the player. 100%. I mean, they you know, they told Tavandre pretty quickly this is our level of expectation of you, and this is how we're going to do it. And it may be different than how James Williams is dealt with or Cedric Gray is dealt with, but just like in an office, everybody's not dealt with the same. Right? Everybody every, on a football team, everybody is treated fairly, but they're not treated the same. Right. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. I think it was Jeff Fisher who said at one point we have the uh, – we have the same set of rules, and they're applied differently to everyone. And that's it. <laughs> I that's like a, that. But that's, that's life. Well, that's yeah, a fact. that's how it is. That's, that's a fact. the world. That's a good discussion. Yeah. Uh, second topic, staying with defense. Gus Bradley is the defensive coordinator in Indianapolis. How will a Gus Bradley defense challenge the Titans' offense this Sunday? Gus is always, you know, of course, I know Gus. Very well. Gus has always been a, a, a four-down lineman defense. So it, it, it's all based on the front. But Gus has always had playmakers at the linebacker position to make his 4-3 work. We talked about 4-3 and 3-4 early in this discussion. Uh, the linebackers in a 4-3, they're very specific. The middle linebacker is different than the will linebacker who lines up to the open side. The will linebacker is very different than the Sam uh, who lines up to the tight end side. They've got different skill sets, different skill sets. Take it back to when I was coaching linebackers here. Stephen Tullick was our middle linebacker. His skill set was – He's the mic. He's the mic. His skill set was complete. We were a 4-3 defense. His skill set was completely different than Keith Bullock, who was the will or the open side backer. The weak side. Yes, Will. Whose skill set is completely different than the Sam or the strong side, David Thornton. They're, and they've got to work in conjunction, but those are different skill sets for those players. And so that's what Gus has always done. He's always had bigger players up front, especially on the inside, three-technique shade, 
guys on the edge that can win one-on-one, but then he's had very specific skill sets, and he's got that at, at Indy, especially with Zaire Franklin oh. and especially with EJ Speed. Those guys can play. And then you're talking about the edge guys. Quiddy Pay is a big guy on the edge that's hard to move. He's 270 pounds. And then Dio Dangbo on the other side right now, I mean, he's 285 pounds and can bring it off the edge and is playing very well. I mean, those guys are those guys are heavy loads, much like what we saw from Green Bay's edge guys in terms of their size. Uh, yeah, they're ab- not the 245 pound edge guys. The other guy, the other guy that uh, that you that we all liked coming out of the draft and especially down at the Senior Bowl was Latu. And Leu Latu and Leu Latu is, is 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 very special off of the edge. He's different than those other two that you just mentioned, but he was the most complete pass rusher coming out in this draft because he wasn't just a one trick pony. He's got counter moves that he had already developed, and of course, you know, he was two years medically retired because of his neck, and then made a tremendous resurgence. Uh, we're going to see a lot of him on Sunday. So if you're the Titans' offensive line, what do you do to give yourself some sort of an advantage against a group of guys that are large and strong? Well, we haven't even mentioned the best one. <laughs> no. <laughs> Who's the best one? Grover. Grover Stewart. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, so <laughs> questions still stand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but you're correct. <laughs> going, in, going into it, you know, you've got to secure the edges against this group because your, your center guard triangle – at least you've got a chance with Grover Stewart and with and with as fast as the linebackers feel. But you can, you've got to secure your edges with this defense. You have to. All right, topic number three. And this is one where we're going to rely on you as a former defensive coordinator and a longtime defensive coach. And we want we want the truth here. Hmm. The Colts, not, not you know, not not the usual lies. Don't lie. We'll take Don't, your Snickers. Yeah, we'll take your the whole jar away if you do. Then I'll tell the truth. Okay. <laughs> I need this for Halloween. Well, the Colts quarterback situation, which is up in the air as we talk about it, either Anthony Richardson or Joe Flacco, with it being up in the air and being just how different this 40-year-old almost guy is compared to maybe the most athletic quarterback in the NFL, how much angst is really happening right now not knowing the Colts quarterback in the Titans' defensive meeting room. You know the structure of their offense, but the way you call it and that what you emphasize will be different because those two quarterbacks, as you mentioned, Ed, we all know, we've watched it, they're polar opposites. Oh, yeah. Complete polar opposites. You've got a young guy that's, that, that's an amazing athlete that, I mean, is a wild horse rider right now but can hurt you doing a lot of different things, even doing things he doesn't know he's doing. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> You've got that's a, crazy. Well, but that's true. <laughs> yeah. But you've got a veteran that can read it, can read out anything, is not going to get rattled, still has enough arm to reach any point of the field. So they are so polar opposite. The structure of their offense, you can surround. But the specifics, depending on which quarterback it is, you have to have specific. And if they both play, let's just say they both play. Okay. Mm. Then you're going to have to, when you're calling it, no, okay, now the RPO system is alive with this young quarterback. And now if you got Flacco in there, you're going to have to be really, really sharp in the back end. Don't give any false looks and be late getting to where you're supposed to get or he'll find it. It doesn't feel like Coach Mack thinks there's a lot of angst in the room just Extra preparation. No, because you've got tape on both of them. Okay. You've got tape on both of them. But what you do and what you call and what you emphasize, and you they're making a point of it this week. If this is the dude, this is what we got to emphasize. If this is the dude, we may have to step on the clutch and shift gears a little bit because here's what he does. So it's more studying and it's more paperwork, essentially. But once you're in the game – you're going to still do what you're going to do. It's just the things you're looking for change slightly. Yeah, but it's a mindset. You, you, it's a mindset it's when you're playing defense, when you're mindset, because I talk about RPOs. I mean, <laughs> if the young guy plays, he's liable to go anywhere at any time. And even if he goes the wrong place, he might out-athlete you. 
that's what you have to that, – that's the thing you can't prepare for, but you have to mentally know that that's a possibility. The other guy, the veteran, you've got to be uh, point on and spot on with your placements wherever you are because he'll find you if you're out of place. Boy, you blew my mind with something you said, Coach. I hadn't even considered the possibility that they might just play both guys. The ultimate plot twist. Well, they absolutely could because you don't. I mean, we don't know, right? We don't. We we don't know, and we don't know. We don't know how healthy Richardson really is. And let's just rewind a little bit to what we've been watching when we study tape. They've had success with Flacco. Yeah, but you could also. Let's just say the owner wanted to make sure the young quarterback played, which happens with owners sometimes. Yes. You could probably make sure that was okay if you played them both. You could get what you need to do because Flacco's playing well, and you could make Mr. Earsay happy because the young guy. Well, but here's how you could couch it too. I mean, because we don't we don't know if if young Richardson is completely healthy yet or not. Right. So we'll just we'll play him to a limit, but we know that we have this safety belt ready to go in. Hmm. The more he talks, the more that seems like what we're going to see on Sunday. And that's just, I mean, that's I based on nothing but my brain going. That's why he's that's the best at do. his job. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's why our we gave him our question. whole jar of yeah, candy. He's got a poster on the wall here in the studio yeah. of just him. People talk about that poster. That's so good. You did you did me such a solid, y'all did, by putting that up in here. Well, we had to. Uh, yeah. well, I mean, it's such Ron a solid. Rivera named the studio after you. He did. He called day. it the Coach Max Studio. The, the, yeah, and, and the tr- we can't really do that. You understand Chico and I have got a real history. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. Which is a, he's a legitimate uh, – he was a legitimate dude in a room full of legitimate dudes. Oh, yes. Yep. All right, so final question on topic three is – as the Titans prepare for the possibility of both Richardson and Flacco playing quarterback for the Colts on Sunday, does that change personnel grouping? Yes, it does. Mm. Okay, it absolutely does. It absolutely does because you know if you got if you got Richardson in there, there's always the possibility, and it depends on down and distance. Sure, it's down and distance, and it's 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 the personnel that they have. You know, are they going to be in twelve with two tights? Are they going to be in eleven? They've lost Michael Pittman Jr. Uh, how much 11 are they going to uh, feature? Uh, are they going to feature Mo Alley Cox more now that they're big combat catchers out of there? That all depends. But to say yes or no to your question, the answer is yes. Well, it's interesting. <laughs> we hadn't even brought up Pittman at this point not playing, but that is such a huge deal because Pittman, and, and we talked about this yesterday, yeah. Pittman is targeted so much. And in games against the Titans, eight games he's played against the Titans, he's been targeted an average of 10.3 times. Last year, he was targeted almost 10 times a game. I mean, there are very few receivers in the NFL who are targeted that much who they just, you know, want to get the ball to. I mean, for Richardson, that's a big deal because he's a safety blanket. For Flacco, it's a big deal because if you're a veteran quarterback, you're always going to throw the ball to the dude who's going to catch it and make something happen that you can count on. That's a that's a big loss for them, not just because he's a good player, but because he's such a big part of what they do. Yeah, and I, I was really – yesterday when we were talking and you were bringing all of this up because you – I mean – as you always do, you researched it down to the nth degree. <laughs> I mean, it was it was fascinating, really. I didn't realize. Well, thank you. I didn't realize that how much he had been. But here, here's here's Michael Pittman, Jr. Because I had Michael Pittman, Senior, uh, when I was coaching at the Cardinals. He doesn't have to be open to throw it to him. That's a huge key. He's a massive combat catcher and has gotten better and better ever since he's been in the league. So. If, especially with a young quarterback, if you've got somebody you can spin it to that doesn't have to be open or you can th- throw, him, throw him open or you can throw him when he's covered and he'll still come down with it, huge advantage. Yeah, 6'4", 223. Well, and, 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 and he's a lot like D-Hop, different size, but D-Hop doesn't have to be open to throw it to him. They'll find out a way to make the catch. And so uh, I didn't realize the numbers that you put out. I mean, the targets are impressive. We don't have to worry about it. He's not going to play. 
Hey, Titans fans, celebrate each Titans win and enjoy the sweet taste of victory with a free donut at Kroger the very next day. Just download your digital coupon to score your free donut at any Kroger store. It's our way of saying thanks. Now let's be clear, it's one free donut per transaction while supplies last. Kroger, fresh for everyone and official grocer of the Tennessee Titans. Tighten up. Home is at the forefront of all that we do. It's why we're so committed to caring for the places and spaces in which we work and live. Ashley, the official furniture provider of the Tennessee Titans. All right, as we come back with Coach Dave McGinnis in the Snickers hot seat, to topic number four. We're putting you on the spot. We're narrowing you down here. I like this. Bringing the heat. Who is, who is the Titans' best player in September? Mm. The best player in September, I would have to say uh, T. Sweat. Oh. Wow. He showed up every week. He did. Played a lot of snaps, too. He's shown up every week. And the other thing is, is he's gotten better every week. Would you have said Tavondre Sweat? I might have said Nick Folk. Oh, well, that's a good one. Yeah, he's been consistent. He's had, I mean, scored a lot of points for this team. Greatest, well, Mike Keith but, makes great I mean, calls up there. And, of course, you hear me laughing sometimes when he says it. But his best call uh, in the Miami game was after he kicked, he, started, he kicked the fifth one. He said, kick is down. It's up. It, you know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it was I, so I, good. I assume the audience is with us at that point. It yeah. was so good. Well, Who's you. yours, Mike? Nick Folk's a good one. Tavondre Sweat is a good one. Um, good job, Mac. I probably, <laughs> I probably would have gone with Harold Landry. Ah. And some of that is carryover from the second half of last year for Harold to stay hot. I mean, he's on pace for 17 sacks this year. No, I know, and and he is. He could get there. He mm -hmm. could get there. He could absolutely get there. And here's what he needs to get there. He needs for Big Jeff to be back in there. Mm -hmm. So we start getting more slide protection mm -hmm. because, I mean, Harold can beat most tackles one-on-one -on -one in this league if he gets enough shots at him. You know who's had some shots but just hasn't been able to close the deal yet that I think is going to close the deal is Arden Key. I agree with uh, you. Yep. Arden Key yep. is so close to making so many big plays, and you just get this feeling that one of these weeks it's going to be like, crazy stupid and he's going to have three or four sacks or, or he's going to be one of those something guys really where, good's going to happen yeah, the dam's going to break yeah. and he's just going to have a game where he just plays out of his mind kind of like the titans defense with turnovers overall yeah you like just, it feels you, like it's going to it's going to happen yeah mm -hmm. arden key is and both of you are right he's uh, he's around the ball a lot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just like just like the lateral that he picked up you know in, in miami he's around the ball a lot so i agree with both of you it's coming Yep. All right, topic five. Who is the player who will bust out in October? I think Tony Pollard. Mm, I like that one. Tony Pollard. I think I think Tony Pollard. You, you, I mean, he and Ty J Spears are a really nice, really nice combo punch. You know, but but Tony Pollard has been. Tony Pollard's had a couple of runs called back for holding calls, but he's been he's been hitting it pretty solid. This whole year, I mean, he's a, he's coming downhill this whole time. There's not a whole lot. Of, if if you watch them, if you watch their individual drills, they, I mean, they they legitimately work on drills of jump cutting and of one step hitting it. I mean, he's he's doing a nice job of that. And when you've got a back that's doing that, plus I think our center guard triangle is getting really solid, and the left side of our offensive line, there's some creases. Uh, I think Tony Pollard. I say Calvin Ridley. Oh. I think he he feels like a horse that just wants to like just take off, you know, or a dog maybe or something that runs fast but you have to hold him back until they can actually take off. And I feel like he's had enough time now to understand the system, understand the rhythm with Will Levis, understand kind of what the vibe is, and now he can really just explode and do what he does really well. And Coach Callahan even said, it's on me. It's on me to find ways to get this guy the ball because we need to use more of that, that skill set, that power, that all of the things that he can do. And so I think that I think that this next month could kind of be the month of Calvin. I hope we're both right. I do too. I think it's Tajay Spears. Oh. Which I, I like it, that I, one, yeah. I, I mean, Tajay's statistics 
don't show how well he's been playing. I mean, he's made some good plays. Tony has much better stats right now. I think Tajay is on the verge of a really, really big statistical game. The thing about Tajay Spears is Tajay Spears with the ball in his hand is a tough out. He's a tough mm-hmm. out. He's a tough out. Who's somebody on defense you think's ready to break out, ready to bust out? I've got one. Can I go first? Yeah, go ahead. Amani Hooker. Ah, uh, yes, that's Amani a good one. Amani Hooker. And he and Quandre Diggs have this thing going. I got to interview Quandre Diggs yesterday. Wow. I just blown away by Quandre Diggs. What a – what a pro. And he was talking about Amani and how they are really coming together and what fans of Amani that he and Jamal Adams were even last year in Seattle. They, as, a, as players, they look at a player on another team who plays their position and says, man, this guy can go. Mm-hmm. This guy can really, really go. And uh, – I, just, I think he's playing well. I think both those safeties are playing well, and I think you're getting ready to see something big happen for Amani. I, I, I think Amani, Amani Hooker is one of those safeties that does everything so well that sometimes you forget that he's back there. Right. And the other thing about him is coming out of Iowa, when you – you remember when we go back and watch his Iowa film before we drafted him, he did everything. He did everything, and that's and that's and that's that that, that that's huge. And and I agree with you. I, I I think I think the addition back there, I think it helps Amani. But Amani Hooker is a pretty stabilizing force. Oh yeah, right now with what's going on back there. Good football player. You got one on defense? I do, and I'm looking up his stats right now, but you came to I me too you fast. I thought texting. No, I'm looking up his stats, yeah. but you came I mean, to me too quick. We did the show quick. last night with Keith Bullock, and he was watching the Mets he while we were doing the show. He was watching the Mets through the whole show. Well, he's a New York show. guy. <laughs> well, I understand. <laughs> he's a New York guy. I understand. Now, like now, now, I understand that. Now, <laughs> now you know what I put up with with him sitting next to me for <laughs> seven years. It. it was For great. seven years. At, at one point, we're having a discussion, and I look over and, and – uh, <laughs> <laughs> was it Lindor that hit the grand slam? I don't remember. I don't know and he, baseball things. And he's going things. crazy. Oh, yeah. He's going. <laughs> was Lindor? He's going crazy. That's so great. And it's like we're doing a show. <laughs> that, that, what, that, Didn't now, care. Now you know how. But but the whole thing with Keith, I don't care. I'm just happy <laughs> he's here. I love being around him. It doesn't matter to me. For all the years that I coached him, I sat like this, and Keith sat like where Amy was, except right here next to me, the whole time. And every now and then, you know, we'd be watching tape, and I'd look over at him, and he'd be doing something else. And I thought, you know what? But guess what? He's always paying attention. Always taking it in. Yep. He's a smart guy. All right, who's your defensive guy that's going to bust out? I think one of the inside linebackers. Okay. Pick one. I was going to say Kenneth Murray. Or maybe both. I was going to say Kenneth Murray. That's who's – Stats I have that's right That's who here. you were texting? No, that's not who I was sure. texting. I was just looking up. <laughs> were you because looking at your daycare camera? No, no I don't have those anymore. Um, no, my brain <laughs> Used remembered to be a thing. Oh, that yeah. he has been really disruptive so far this season. Yeah. And I was looking to see if the numbers verified what was in my brain, which is Kenneth Murray's well, kind here, of been here, all Amy, over the place. Amy, give me this for your brain. Thank Good you. Job. My brain was right. Good and job. the numbers back it up. And here we yeah. go. Here we go. All right. Hey, Titans fans, SeatGeek makes it easy to find tickets so you can be a part of all the touchdown celebrations this season. Whether you're buying or selling football tickets, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek is the official primary ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. The most disruptive idea in ticketing, a ticket that works. Expect the expected. SeatGeek. (laughs) SeatGeek. Made a rookie mistake this football season? Maybe you should have had... A Snickers. Because now you can enter for the chance to turn those rookie mistakes into prizes, including a trip to Super Bowl 59. Visit snickers.com slash rookie mistakes for details. Time for the key ingredients of the game delivered by Little Caesars. Whenever you're ready. Go. The Titans have seen some good quarterbacks so far in 2024, but they've not seen one like the Colts' Anthony Richardson, who we think we're going to see. He's big and he's fast and he has a big-time arm. So key number one for the Titans, make Anthony Richardson work on every play, give him nothing easy. 
Speaking of big plays waiting to happen, the Colts have several big play guys on offense. They have them everywhere. They can take a play the distance at any time. The Titans have got to tackle well this Sunday. Good tackling, key number two. Key number three, continuing to improve protection. The Colts don't have one pass rusher whose numbers blow you away, but they have several players who can rush the passer. The Titans must identify the pass rushers wherever they're coming from and block them. Tennessee must continue to improve their pass protection. Did we say you had to do this in 60 seconds or 30? 60. Okay, you did it in 51. Good job. Little Caesars is the official pizza partner of your Tennessee Titans. Download the Little Caesars app and get your favorites delivered today. Delivery fees do apply. Matt, can we get you a sign to spin Pizza, or pizza. Something? Pizza, pizza. <laughs> All right, hang on. Prop change. This is the OTP pregame. Thank you. Where every section of the show is sponsored. <laughs> it's time for a mayo tovation from Hellman's. May your Titans cheers be loud and your buffalo chicken dip make your mama proud. Hellman's, the official mayo of the Tennessee Titans. May your game day be delicious. Mayo, mayo. <laughs> mayo, mayo, Hellman's. Mayo, mayo. <laughs> I think it's really time to end this. That was really good. <laughs> All right, so we're geared up for Sunday. Uh, remember, Titans game day is on the air on Channel 4 in Nashville. And uh, By the way, that's a lot of fun doing It's that. a lot of fun with our friend Chris Harris and, yes. and the great team there. Uh, we're on this Sunday at 1030 Central. Legend of the game this week is Kyle Vandenbosch. God, one of my favorites. I had to fight so hard to get Kyle. Uh, that's another story. Okay. <laughs> you had to get Kyle Vandenbosch twice, didn't you? I had to, I fought so hard to get him drafted. I mean, I can't even say the words and then, I didn't said. Did you fight to get him here as well? <sighs> yeah, but Jim Washburn really fought hard to get him here. But we, we, we got a lot. that's a great story within itself. We'll tell that some other time. Maybe tell it Sunday morning. Well, Titans. before Mayo, yeah. Mayo. Mayo, Mayo. <laughs> Just remind you, Titans countdown is at 11, and then kickoff is set for 12.02, the Titans and the Colts. Woohoo! From Nissan Stadium, the first division game for the Titans, actually the third one for the Colts. This is big. This is really big because the Titans don't play another division game until November 24th. Big. And then end the season with three division games. You win this one if you're the Titans. You're 2-3. and three. 1-0 and in the division, and you've dropped the Colts to 0-3 in the division. That's huge. You move into second in the division, and granted, you know, I mean, you don't get anything for that right now, but, you know, maybe you get a little momentum going to Buffalo, who has to play on Monday night football against the Jets. Everything you've said in that little spiel there is a fact spiel. It was a spiel. Doesn't sound positive. It is. For Coach Dave McGinnis, thanks for being in the Snickers hot seat. Thanks for having me here. Don't put I, any Hellman's on a Snickers. I get pizza, I get mayonnaise, and I get Snickers that I'm going to hand out. Come to Coach Mack's house, please. <laughs> You're going to get a bunch of these. Boosted candy. Nice. <laughs> Come to my house. For Coach Dave McGinnis and Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us for this, whatever Bizarre it is, edition, edition of the OTP <laughs> pregame.